All right, well, we're going to do a quick 15-minute presentation on five Google Classroom tricks you'll want to know. If you hang out for the presentation, you get a free copy of my book, Ditch That Textbook. So it'll be a quick in and out, and we'll, uh, we'll get some, some good things about Google Classroom going. So, All right, so let's jump right over here. OK, so um, let me tell you real quick about who I am and where you can find this information. Um, my name is Matt Miller. I am the author of the book, Ditch That Textbook, a high school Spanish teacher for 11 years. And I'm a blogger and write at the Ditch That Textbook blog. And what you see in front of you actually is a 70-inch ViewSonic touchscreen monitor, which is pretty impressive. And so I'm able to scroll up and down here, and you guys can see my presentation pretty easily on that, that monitor. So um, that's been really nice to use. Um, the resources for all of my uh, sessions that I'm doing today are available here at ditchthattextbook.com slash ViewSonic. So I'll get you a copy of that. Do you want a copy of the book? You just you want to watch the Google Classroom stuff. Okay, awesome. Very good. So, um, so anyway, that's all available there, plus all of my other sessions that I've done, all of the step-by-step -step on how to do those different things are all available right there. So, okay, so that said, try to close that real quick. We're going to scroll down to the Google Classroom part, hopefully. <laughs> Here we go. Past the Choose Your Own Adventure Stories, which is on there too. Okay, so five Google Classroom tricks that you'll want to know. So these are just some of those things that sometimes if you're just kind of checking out Google Classroom on your own, um, these are things that sometimes people miss. So I wanted to kind of highlight those a little bit. And the first one is the kinds of comments that you can leave students using Google Classroom. And so you've got three different kinds of comments that you can leave. And the first kind is the class comment. So these are what you find on the outside. Let me switch back to classroom real quick. So if you're in an assignment right here, on the outside of that assignment, where it says right here, add class comment, that's where you can leave those particular comments. What's nice about those is that everybody can see them. So if you leave that comment, that's the kind of thing where if you're going to answer that question over and over again, this is where you want to leave that particular comment. Um, if you're going to leave something specific for students, like specific feedback or something about their grades, you don't want to leave that there. Where you want to leave that instead is in actually inside of the, of the assignment. So let's pull this up real quick. And so from here, if I click on a specific student's name, now I've got the private comment. And that's a whole different thing. So you've got the, pri the public comment that you can see on the outside of the class. The private comment is where you can leave a general feedback about the assignment. And so if you want to say, overall, this is really good. Overall, you did this really nicely. This is the place to do that. So that's the second kind of comment. The third kind of comment goes even more specific. So if you go inside of the file, you can actually leave some specific feedback about that file inside the file. And so if I wanted to tell him that his thesis statement was really good, I could tap on that right there, and I could hit the comment button. And so this is leaving real detailed feedback about specific parts of their assignment. I could type that in right there, and then submit it, and I'd be good. And so it gets from the real specific here to the even more general that everybody can see in the class comments. So knowing those different kinds of comments is kind of a nice thing to know. So that's one. The next one, this is kind of cool. Use the class photo as a bulletin board. Let me show you what I mean by that. And so if you look out here, you can see the class photo is a bunch of books, right? And so that's kind of neat. You can use the select theme to be able to choose whatever picture it is that you want. But then there's this upload photo feature. And if you use that feature, there's this like ninja trick that you can do in, in Google Classroom that lets you do something even better. Let me show you what I mean. So let's bring up the practice class. So this doesn't look like much at first, but what it does give you is some customization. So I'm going to show you how to do this in a second, but you can create your own image. It's about 1,500 pixels by 400 pixels. And if you do that, you can add whatever information you want them to see every time you load up your Google Classroom class. 
And so instead of a picture of books, instead of a picture of a frog, now you can see what is Mr. Miller or Mrs. Miller's class schedule every single class period. Or contact information, what's their class phone number, what's their email address. Anything that you want them to remember to keep kind of top of mind. Um, if you always have a vocabulary quiz on Friday, you can have that kind of information up here. And so here's how you do that if you want to, is you go to your drive. Here we go. Okay, so you go to your drive, bring up a new Google drawing. And so if you bring up this new Google drawing, let's use this one. I resized it so it's just the right size to be that header image at the top of Google Classroom. See how that's kind of like the same size as that, right? And so what I'll do is, this is just, right here, that's just a text box. And so I knew, looking over here, that we've got the name of the class and the teacher's name right there. So in the center, we don't want to put anything in the center, or otherwise that's going to be right there. But all of this space over here I can use. And so that's where I can come over here and I could type in like fourth period, fifth period, sixth period, so on. Whatever information you want them to be able to see over and over again, you stick it on here. Whenever you're done, you go to File, Download it as a JPEG image. And so you're just saving it as a picture file. And so once you've done that, let's do it. And so you can see right there, it just downloaded my picture, or downloaded this as a picture file that I can use. So I switch over to Classroom, and now all I have to do is hit Upload a Photo, and then drag that photo in, or go find it in my Downloads folder or wherever it is, and it puts it in there. And so think about the stuff you could put in there. You could get a picture of all of your class. So you could have like a class picture up here on this part, or you could have an inspirational quote, or you could have you know, whatever it is that you want kids to see on a regular basis, you can customize this. So that way, you're not just looking at a frog or a bunch of books, you know. <laughs> so that's a really neat one. So that's number two. Talked about comments earlier. This one is used the photo, class photo as a bulletin board. Here's the third one, and it's about the About tab. So, okay, so here's our practice class. And this isn't just so much me telling you what the About tab is, but how to use it just right. And so you've got this tab that gives some information about the class. And what's nice about this is that you can add links to important materials. So these are the kind of things that you want to put up here that kids will need to access all year. You might put your syllabus on there. You might put a link to a certain website that you know you're going to use all the time. Put a certain YouTube video on there. Now here's what people do once they find out about this About tab sometimes. They start to put everything on there. <laughs> and so all of a sudden they have this huge list of, you can see how this is. If I wanted to put a link, I could put a link to I think that's what it is. Then I can hit post. That might not be the right link, I don't know. But then it'll show up just like you can see right there. So now I've got those, and those are really handy. But when you get 40 of them on there, not so handy anymore, right? <laughs> and so the key here is this, is, this is tip number three, don't overload your about page. If you've got, I'd say maybe five, to 10 tops. If you get much more than that, it's so overloaded that the convenience is gone. And so if you've got other stuff that you want them to see, just stick it into your stream. If you want to give them a link to something, but you don't want to make it an assignment, just stick it in there as an announcement. So you can do pretty much the same thing. You put that link in there, and it just shows up right here on your stream. If that's something that you need for a week or two weeks or something, just put it in like that, and then it'll go on down the stream after a while. But if it's something that your kids are going to need all year, definitely stick it in the About tab. That's where you want to do that. So that's tip number three. Let's go to four. See the student side. Have you ever tried to tell, if you've ever tried to give good instructions on how to use Classroom to students, sometimes it's hard when you don't know what it looks like to be a student in Google Classroom. 
And so there's a, there's a trick. You guys can sit if you want. We won't make you buy anything. <laughs> or you can stand either way. Um, so there's a, a trick that you can use to, um, to be able to see what it's like to be a student. And here's how I would do it. Partner up with a colleague in your school district or in your school and have both of you create like a practice class, kind of like my example is called Matt's practice class, right? Okay, so once you do that, invite your colleague into your class as a student. Let them add as a student, and then you add yourself, or have them invite you as a student in their class. So then both of you have a classroom where you're a student, so you can actually see how things are different. Let me show you what I mean by that. And where'd it go? Here we go. Okay, and this one right here, we're a student. So instead of this saying students, now it says classmates. So if you told them, click on the students tab, they'll go, well, I don't have a students tab. It's classmates tab. This side over here looks different for them. Whenever you click into an assignment, this all looks different. So you don't have a button that says Mark is done, but the student would. So if you want to see what that student experience looks like, that's where if you partner up with somebody, create a class and then just invite them into your class or have them invite you into their class as a student, you can see how things actually look from the student perspective. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Good. Last one. Create new assignments from templates. So if you ever have an assignment that you assign over and over and over again, like if you have a weekly reading log, or if you have some sort of a reflection at the end of the grading period, or something that gets assigned on a regular basis, what you can do, here's how I would do that. I'd switch over here, and I would create, let's go back up to classes, please. I would create a new class that's just called templates. This is where I would create one of those assignments that I'm going to use over and over again. And this is kind of like the folder in your drawer that has all of your originals that you photocopy. So this is going to be kind of like the original. So if I have four classes of 10th grade English and they all need to do these reading logs, I would just, in the templates, Remember, there's no students here. This is just kind of like a holding area for you. I'd create a new assignment. It would say reading log. I would probably attach the file to the actual reading log itself. And then once I attached it, I would hit assign. And then now that assignment is created, right? Now that that assignment is created in here, I can go out to any of my other classes and pull that assignment in. So that's kind of like if you create your own class that says templates or my own, like you could call it your filing cabinet or whatever. If you create that one classroom with no students in it, that's where you can go put a bunch of stuff and then just pull it into other classes later. Kind of an organizational tip. So that way you don't actually have to create that assignment in a real live classroom. You can just have it there. <clears throat> and then now I can switch to, like I can switch to this class and watch what happens. We'll use the reuse post button. Under templates, there's my reading log. I can go to any of my classes, and they're all just saved in that one spot. So that classroom almost becomes like a folder more than it does a classroom. Does that make sense? So that's just another little tip that you can use to manage your classroom. So we've gotten to the end. Um, other resources, if you want more about Google Classroom, I've got links to five different blog posts. Google Classroom posts are some of the most popular ones on my blog. People look at those the most. And so I've got my five best Google Classroom posts there if you want to know more, have more ideas on how you can use it. And yeah, I think that about does it. So any questions? Is that good? Okay. If you guys didn't get a copy of my book and you'd like one, I'll go grab one real quick, okay? All right, great. Thanks.